remotely is now more important than ever. With Scotia Online for Business, you can safely and quickly conduct your transactions and save on costs. Accept payments, transfer funds, including third-party and wire transfers, view balances and download statements, pay bills and credit cards, make supplier payments, manage payroll, and purchase foreign exchange. Let us handle the way your business does business. Speak with a Scotia representative today. Call 888-429-5087 or email bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com. Managing your company's finances remotely is now more important than ever. With Scotia Online for Business, you can safely and quickly conduct your transactions and save on costs. Accept payments, transfer funds, including third-party and wire transfers, view balances and download statements, pay bills and credit cards, make supplier payments, manage payroll, and purchase foreign exchange. Let us handle the way your business does business. Speak with a Scotia representative today. Call 888-429-5087 or email bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com. Good evening, Scotia bankers, and good evening, customers. Welcome to the first in the Scotia Bank Online for Business webinar. My name is Casey Johnson Vaughan, and I'm Senior Manager for SME Professional Partnerships, Caribbean North and Central, and I will be guiding you through the, today's proceedings. So we want to welcome customers from four countries today. We have customers from Turks and Caicos, Cayman Islands, Bahamas, and Jamaica. And so you may be wondering why are we here today? Well, digital is the new word for 2020 and beyond. Um, it's very important that we get all our customers online. And we thought about several different ways how to assist our customers in ensuring that they are aware of how the platform works and what Scotiabank can do to assist them in ensuring that everyday, everyday banking needs can be met using Scotia Online for Business. So we'll be hosting a series of webinars, today being the first, and we'll have two more in the next coming week, in the couple of next two weeks. And so today, I want to introduce our team. We will have our main presenter, who is Rashid John. We'll also have our support team members, which is Tidra Johnson. She is from Bahamas, and Tidra is the Commercial Service Sales Officer for Corporate and Commercial. We have Rithmon McKinney, who is a Product Specialist for Cash Management. We also have William Belfort from Cayman Islands, who is a commercial manager. And of course, we have Gail Wiley, who is also a senior manager for um, Global Transaction. And she's responsible for assisting Jamaica as well as Bahamas. So we want to thank you all for joining us this evening. And we want to tell you that it will be a very informative and insightful afternoon. What we want to do is to ensure that if you have questions, you can now type in your questions to us and we will direct them at the end, towards the end. The last 15 minutes of this session is where you'll be able to, answer, to ask questions to the members of our team and also for them to answer those questions for you. So Rashid, who is our main presenter today, will be taking you through, one, how the platform works. Um, in addition, he will showing you, will be telling you how to add respective users and why do we need them, digital token versus soft token, and he'll also be talking about third-party transfer. So I'm sure all of you are looking forward to see what Rashid has to share with us today, and we are happy to have you all. And again, we wish for you a great evening, so we're going to invite our presenter, Rashid, to take over. Rashid, over to you. Rashid, can you please unmute? Thanks for that, Casey. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll be your main presenter today, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the text area, and be open-minded. It's very, it's the way forward. We are going digital, and the bank is on the path of ensuring that all our customers are online. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be going through, let me just bring up my screen. All right, guys, can everyone see? All right, can everyone see the screen? Yes, Rashid, please go ahead. Thank you. Great. All right, so for today, we will be going through the welcome emails that our customers will normally get. 
once they have been enrolled on the system. Secondly, we will be going through the digital versus the physical tokens, then the company system administrators registering and information reporting, which includes third party transfers. Now, once a newly once a user has been set up on the system, they will receive three emails. The first email they will get is an email containing what's called a reference number. This reference number will come from no reply at scotiabank.com and the subject will be Scotia Online for Business Registration Information. And if you can look at the screenshot below, this is an actual snippet of how it will appear. And the reference number is that long list of characters that you see there. And that will be the first email that you will normally get. The second email that you would receive is what's called the secure email instructions. Now, here at Scotiabank, whenever we're sending sensitive information, we have to send it via our secure email platform. When you have been enrolled on the system, you would have been enrolled with what's called a temporary secret word. Now, for us to send you that information, we have to send it via the secure email platform. And what the team would have done was to send you instructions on how to register and access that email. And the third email that you would also receive is one coming from EMS at scotiabank.com. Now, again, once we send your secure email, it's not gonna come directly to you. What will happen is that you're gonna get an email from EMS at scotiabank.com stating that, hey, Rashid Johns had, is trying to send you sensitive information and to access this email, please click on the link below. Now, in regards to the secure email, once you have received that email from EMS at scotiabank.com, you would have to register. And that is what the email instructions would walk you through. Now, basically, all you will have to do, once you click on the link in that secure email, it's gonna take you to the sign on page. You're gonna select register. And then you're gonna see your email address appear and you're gonna select register again. And you will be given a temporary password. Well, one will be sent directly to your email for you to retrieve. Once you've received that temporary password, you will just copy that password, click on the link in the email, and it will carry you to the sign on page and you will enter that along with your email address to begin the registration process for the secure email. Now, once you have completed the registration process for the secure email, you will then be brought to the actual email with your secret word in it. And that will just be your temporary secret word along with login credentials or login instructions, basically. Now, one of the main aspects of the system is the digital token, right? Now, previously we were using the physical tokens only, but now by default, all users that are newly created on the system will be set up as a digital token user. What this will do is, what, what this entails is that the customer or the user will download the digital token app on their smartphone or device, log in using their phones or their smart device credentials, and they will scan a barcode and the token will be added to the app. Now we do have a minimum requirement for the Android device and also the Apple device. For Android, it's 6.0 and above, and for Apple, it's 9.3 and above. Now for the physical tokens, again, by default, each user is set up as a digital token user. However, if the, for some instance where the digital token is not compatible with your device or your work environment doesn't allow you to use a smartphone, you can opt for what's called the physical token. Once we, we can always prepare the token for you and we can send it to the closest branch for pickup. And once you've received the, to the physical token, we can walk you through the registration process. Now, most importantly, a lot of customers tend to ask, what is the serial number? because they don't recognize that there is a few numbers on the back of the token. And if you notice below in my example, 
it is highlighted there. It begins with G-A-L-T in all uppercase and the numbers that are in line with it. Okay. Company system administrators. Now, these are the users who have been given the capabilities to create additional users, to unlock users, or to even reset their passwords, right? These are the super users on the system. These users also have been given what's called a secret word. Only company system administrators will be given that option. Regular users will be given what's called an authorization code, and that is system generated. Now, for the company system administrators, they're the ones who will normally receive these welcome emails with the temporary secret word. And once they've gotten the temporary secret word, they're going to go ahead and register along with, the re with their reference number. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through the registration process where we would get the reference number and also the temporary secret word, okay? All right, so right here, I have brought up the main web page for the Jamaica online banking system. Now, once you're here, and it goes the same for all the other territories, once you're here to access the online business registration page or sign on page, all you'd have to do is go to the upper right and you will see sign in. You're going to select the drop down arrow, select business banking, and you will be redirected to the sign on page. Now, for first time users, what they're going to do is go to the middle of the screen and they're going to see the option that says new to Scotia Online for Business, and they're going to select register now. Once they've selected that option, they will be given the option to enter the reference number and the secret word. Now, I have an email here with the reference details. Now, most importantly, we have had a lot of issues here when users have been copy, copying and pasting the information. Now, when you're copying, please ensure that there are no spaces between the cursor and the characters. Sometimes this happens and a space is generated and it gives you an error whenever you're trying to register. So please ensure that when you're registering or you're copying the information, you only copy up to the last character, no spaces. All right, and I'm gonna paste that there. And I'm gonna enter my temporary secret word Great, and this is what the registration process would look like. For a company system administrator, it's going to ask them to create a username. Let me just go on here. And a password. Now, for the password, it gives you the criteria here to the right. It must be eight or more characters long, at least one lowercase letter, at least one uppercase letter, a number and does not contain your username, meaning you cannot use your username in your password. And most importantly, no special characters, no hyphens, no ampersand, no percentage sign. So let me just create a password here.
No, the secret word. This secret word would normally be used whenever you're registering or say you have forgotten your password and your profile has been reset. You're going to be required to enter this secret word along with your reference number to proceed to change your password. Additionally, if you were to call our support line, they will also ask you as a verification question, what is your secret word? Okay, so please be mindful when you're creating this secret word. Now, once I've entered my secret word, a barcode will appear because, again, by default, I will be I would have been created as a digital token user, all right? Now, what I would have to do is to go to my respective app store, download the digital token app. It's going to be a black and white Scotiabank logo. Once I've installed it, there's going to be an option to log in. Once you select that option, it's going to prompt you to enter your phone security password or pin code if it is that your phone normally uses a fingerprint or iris scanner you can do that right but you have to scan this barcode all right i'm gonna scan barcode using my device Good. And once you've scanned the barcode, it will appear similar to this. Now, once you've scanned, you will select continue. Oh, sorry about that. You'll be brought to the questions and, and security, well, security questions and answers screen. You can just select here. I'm just going to choose three random questions. Uh, let me see if I get this correctly. Uh, what is your best friend name? So one, two, three. What is your child? And once you've entered all the credentials correctly, you will then be brought to the last screen, which is the user credentials review. And here now, you will enter the token value that is on the app. So you will sign back in. Look for the value that is currently on it on the screen. And then select register. And basically, that is it in terms of registering for the online business platform. Great. Now, once you have registered to sign in, all you would have to do is click on Scotia Online for Business. Enter the user. All right, sorry about that, guys. All right. 
I'm having a bit of difficulty here. We just created the information. But let me take you through. Now, once you've entered the username and password correctly, it will prompt you for the token value. All right, I'm logging back into the app to retrieve a new token value, which changes every 30 seconds. All right. And then it's just going to ask you for your security question. And once you've entered that correctly, it's going to basically sign you in. And this is how the dashboard or the main screen would look like. All right. Now, the first thing that I would like to show you, once you've signed in, you have the option to mask or unmask your accounts. Now, by default, all the accounts come masked, meaning you won't be able to see the full account details. So one of the first things I would walk you through is to unmask your account. Now for that, from the main tabs at the top, you will select preferences, account settings, and once you're there, you'll be given the option to unmask or mask your account. Additionally, you can also give your accounts nicknames. So you have multiple accounts and you want to easily distinguish between them. You can easily just type in a name and just submit that information. Now, let me go ahead and mask the account to show you what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to head back to the dashboard. Now, once I'm back on the dashboard, if you notice, you're unable to see the full account details. And this comes by default. Now, to, again, to unmask it, all you would have to do is to just select preferences, account settings, unmask. And you just submit that information and the changes would have been made. Now, in order to view your accounts now, which is a primary function of the online banking system, once you've signed in and you're on the dashboard, all you would have to do is go to the respective account that you want to view, select view account, and what would happen is that you'll be taken to the current day account activity screen. Now, if there are any transactions done on your account today, you would see that those transactions there. Now, to view transactions for up to 365 days prior to today, you, all you would have to do is go to the upper right, select previous day activity, Select the date ranges that you want. So say I want it from April 1st to yesterday's date. And then select refresh. And the transactions will appear. Okay. Additionally, we also have enabled the statements feature on the system. So each month, what you can do to retrieve your statements is to click on information reporting or info reporting as you see it here. And one of the sub tabs below, if you come straight across, you will see statements. Once you've clicked on the statements tab, you're gonna see the listing of all your account statements being available and you'll also see the statement date. Okay. 
All right, let me go back to the dashboard. And another thing that I would like to show you is are would be the transfer options. The transfer options include transferring between your same currency accounts, transferring from one currency to another, and third party transfer, which means transferring from your company's account to another individual or business account. Now, again, once you've signed in by default, you'll be on the dashboard. To access any of those services, all you'd have to do is select account management. And by default, the first tab that you'll be brought to would be the funds transfer tab. Now, this tab will allow you to transfer funds between same currency accounts, along with transferring funds between two different currency accounts. Now, say I want to transfer between my JMD accounts, all I would have to do is select both accounts, enter the amount that I would like to transfer, the currency, I can also future date the transfer if I want, right? So say I want it for the 15th. And you also will be given the option to, if say it's a fixed amount, and you normally do this each and every week, month, or bi-weekly, you can also set it up here. So instead of going into the system each time to repeat the transaction, the system will do it for you. Now, once you've entered their criterias, all you would have to do is submit. Again, this is, sorry, I chose the same account. Submit. And then you'll be given the option to enter your password and your token value to confirm the transaction. And that is just transferring funds between same currency accounts. Now, if we were to transfer, say, from the Jamaican to the USD account, and I would like to transfer, say, 50 US, I will put 50 here, then select USD. So you don't have to do the conversion yourself. Once you told, once you Inputting the information, all you need to do is select the currency, the amount and the currency, and then the system will show you the converted amount. Sorry about that. All right, so due to, I guess, balance restrictions on the, on the test account, we're unable to proceed to the next page. But what would normally happen, let me try even a dollar and see if it will come up. Good. Now, once you've entered the amount and you've selected USD, what the system will show you is how much it will cost you in GMB along with the cross-currency rate. So for today, it is at 149.16. And then after you've reviewed the information, if everything is okay, all we have to do is enter your password, enter your token value, and confirm the transaction. Rashid, just to step in to support you, at this point in time, we would have, if it's the other country, it would be the same thing. The other currency will be converted to, right? As per the dollar per day. Correct. Okay. All right, and the last option here is would be the third party transfer option. Now, this function would allow you to transfer funds outside of your company's account to either individual or another business account maintained here at Scotia Bank or at another commercial bank. Now, please note that there is a cutoff time for RTGS payments throughout the day. Now, if you want same-day payment, 
please ensure that payments are made by 1.30 p.m. Mondays to Fridays. And these are for RTGS payments, meaning payments going across to another bank. And these payments are, have now, are normally exceeded, are, sorry, these payments normally exceed 1 million Jamaican dollars. Now, to process a third party transfer, we would have to set up the recipients on the system first. To do that, once you've selected account management and you have selected the sub tab that says third party transfers, to the far right, you will select manage third party recipients. All right. Now, what you will have to do first is to select whether it's an individual or a business you would like to create. So in this instance, let me just create a business set. All right, so I'm gonna give my company a name. Now, the transit number field is only when you're gonna add a Scotia Bank account folder, right? Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use the Scotia Center Transit. The account type, it's a mandatory field. The account number, now, for third-party transfers, the account number must be nine digits in length for all Scotia Bank accounts. So if somebody gives you a number one, two, three, four, you would have to add zeros before that so that it adds up to nine digits. And this applies only to third party transfers. Next, you will select the currency of the account. And if possible, if you have the information, the email address for the recipient, you can proceed to add it here. But it's not a mandatory field. Now, because I've added the transit number for Scotia Center here, I'm going to look for it in the list populated below. Now, the banks available listing, this will contain all the domestic banks here in Jamaica. And let me just give you a run through quickly. So you have Scotia Bank, you have Citibank, you have FCIB, FGB, JMMB, Jamaica National, and NCB, along with Sajikor. So we have all the com all the commercial banks here locally on the platform, and the same will apply for the other territories. Now, for this example, I had already entered the Scotia Center Transit. So what I had done was to come through the listing and look for BNS Scotia Bank Center. Again, because it's going to test for our Scotia Bank account, it doesn't. This account number does not exist. So our system would actually tell us now on your end once you're adding a recipient for third party transfers, you would have to ensure that the name is correct and the account number is correct, or you're gonna get an error message similar to this. So it is important to get the account number correct and the spelling of the name correct. Okay. Now, once you've added a third party recipient to the system. Under the third party transfer tab, you're going to see the listing of recipients that you have added below. Now, to access them, all you would have to do is go to the two option, select the drop down menu, and you can just select your recipient from the listing. Okay. Then you can select your account that you're going to pay from, the amount, currency, 
and then you can just submit and confirm. Again, once you've confirmed using a password and token value, the payment will be processed and it normally takes 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for Scotiabank payments. While depending on the route for other bank transactions, it can go either via ACH or RTGS, which we can go into at a later date. All right, if I guess we can proceed to the question section now. Okay, Rashid, thank you very much for walking us through that. We do appreciate that. It was um, very informative. And so we're at the point, another juncture in this webinar series where we're going to invite, um, we're going to take questions from the members in the audience. And so we're going to ask our capable team to answer a few of the questions that we have here. So the first question that we have, um, Rashid, if you want to take it, or it could be Rithmond or Tidra, is the question was asked, please to what is the next step when, when you have not received the no reply email? Okay, sure, I can take that one. Okay, go ahead for me, Rashid. All right, normally when you haven't received the no reply email, there could be an issue with the email address itself and uh, you may have to liaise with your business banking officer or your respective GTB officer to ensure that the setup was done correctly. Okay. Now, once they have reviewed the email address and ensure that everything is correct, they will proceed to do um, test emails to ensure that the email do is accepting emails. Additionally, we can also check the spam mail or your junk mail to see if the email was forwarded to that inbox. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, at the end of the webinar, I will also share with you some the email addresses that you can send queries to or numbers that you can call if you have any questions because our team will help you today to ensure that any queries that you have that may not be addressed right now, it will be addressed going forward. Another question that was asked is, please remind me of the website login for what is now being discussed. So um, I guess um, I could probably explain, or Rashid, do you want to take that? Rashid or Rithmond, it's pretty much they're asking how do they get onto the, the website? So so um, what Rashid would have shared okay. earlier is, okay, mm -hmm. go ahead, Rashid. Okay, so okay. what you can do is, okay, so basically what you can do is go to your respective country's main webpage, so I'm in Jamaica. What I would do is enter jamaica.scotiabank.com and once it takes me to that page, there will be a sign, a sign in icon to the upper right. Beside that, there's a drop down arrow where you can select business banking. Once you've selected that, it will take you directly to the Scotia Online for Business website. All right, thank you, Rashid. The other question that we have here is someone is asking, to see, at the beginning of the webinar, we had ex we had indicated that they should register at a certain address, and then they they should give us a registration number and temporary code. But the person is saying, I don't know how to get there. I mean, how do I register there? So I guess you would have walked through the step, Rashid, have um having received the reference number, the having had your past secret password, and now you're supposed to go to the login page. Just take us a reminder for the short step, what happens next? Okay, great question. Now, once you have managed to gain access to the secure email, which contains the secret word, along with the registration instructions, there will also be a link in that email that would take you directly to the sign on page. So if you do, if you do manage to get access to that email, there's a link in there that can take you directly to the registration page, and that is when you will select register now. And then you'll be given the option to enter your reference number and your secret word. Okay. Another question which was asked is, countries without with no ACH, um, will this option be turned off? So Paul Rithmond or Tidra? Uh, 
don't have to do hair. You have a, a country that don't. Well, then you know. It wouldn't be available. But Bahamas. It would not. Yeah. Sorry, right. sorry, Tidra. I'm sorry, your um, microphone was in and out, but you're saying in, in Bahamas, we do not have a seat, so it would not be available on the platform. That's correct? No, we ACA. Um, I'm sorry, Rithmond, can you probably pick that up? Because we're not hearing Tidra ver um, very well. Can you say what she's trying to say? Hi, are you good, Henry? Yes, we're hearing you. Okay, so in the Bahamas, we do have the ACH available, but the question asks um, for countries where ACH is not available. Right. And to respond to that, that asks that functionality wouldn't be accessible in that site. Okay, exactly. Right. Okay, thank yeah, you. Meaning they won't be able to transfer funds to another bank. Right, Correct. because it's not it's yes. not a functionality for that particular country. So it will right. not That's be right. available. Right. All right. The other question is um as a system as system administrator, um the person is asking who can they call to get personal help to set up users. So uh, what I would recommend, depending on which country you belong to, at the end of the seminar, we will send we will show you the email address that you can send the questions to. And then we will have someone from our team who will call you and guide you through the process. Um, another question is someone mentioned that they tried transferring from US to their Jamaican account and they got two messages. One, the form, um, it says from the account is not entitled for cross currency transfer. And two, the destination account is not entitled for cross currency transfer. Can you probably explain to the customer what would have gone wrong with this particular transaction? Sure. So basically what that is saying is that they are not enrolled for cross-currency transfers. They are enrolled for transfers, meaning they will be able to transfer funds between the same currency accounts. But once they see that message, it means that they are not enabled for cross-currency transfers. Now, it could be one of two options. It could be that they are really and truly not enrolled for the service, or it hasn't been added to that specific user profile. So it's, at, it's added to the company's profile, but it isn't added to the user profile. So at that point, that is when uh, a GTB officer or um, a BSC support officer would ha have to look on the profile and then advise further. Right. So what we can say, just to add to you, Rashid, is that um, for um, all of our customers, we have been looking at ensuring what type of package that you would have been registered for. And so if you're a customer who currently has our, our CMS Lite package, we're trying to upgrade all of our customers across Caribbean, North and Central to a full service package where they're able to do all of these various transactions that we mentioned would have been cross-currency transfer, wire payments, third party, view bill payments, balance, et cetera. And so um, what one of our biggest efforts that we've been trying to do for the last couple of months is to get all of those customers who have not, um, who does not have the full service package to be upgraded to that package so they're able to do all the functionality. And so our team is, stand by, is on standby to assist all the customers here who are joined today that would like to be upgraded, that they will be upgraded to these packages, okay? All right. So, um, Casey, I just want to add, yes. add to that. Um, in certain sites, just to be mm -hmm. clear, certain sites have various exchange control laws mm -hmm. that would um, create some issues as opposed to cross currencies. Right. So it's important that um, the clients would reach directly out to a GTB officer and kind of um, set expectations and to let them know um, what it would be required. A lot, as well as some customers may have special exchange rates and what's not so it's important again to reach directly out to us okay all right excellent so so just in case you may be wondering you may be hearing the term gtb officer and you may not know what that is so we have currently at scotia bank we have business banking officers where most of our customers would be um used to so those are the officers that you probably see on a regular basis and they'll walk with you. They'll actually help you to assist you with any matters, even such as this. The GTB team is, a, is another team, another arm of Scotiabank, where we focus mainly on 
merchant services and these online banking platforms assist our business customers and they are very tr they are trained and skilled to help customers with um, answering some of these more technical questions so oftentimes if the business banker is not able to assist you with those questions the member of that team will be able to assist you and so um so what we will say in this case you can go straight to your business banker who will assist you in putting you on to a GTB officer should in case a business banker is not able to answer that particular question or the, um, to give you advice on a particular service. And then as we indicate below, we will also share with you an inbox for the respective countries that you can send your queries to and then we will direct them to the officer to assist you particularly with those requests. Okay. All right. Another, I saw uh, another question again, just asking about the website. So let me just assist everybody here. For the Scotia Bank website for all the respective countries, let's take for Jamaica. To get onto the website, you will be jm.scotiabank.com. Um, so it, it will be jmscotiabank.com, and it will be the same thing for the other countries. Where it will be um, for TCI, it would be TCI. For Belize, for for Bahamas, it would be BS, and for Cayman, it would be um, CI. So once you put the name of the country before Scotia Bank, the acronym is it will be JM Scotia Bank. And when you go onto that page, you will go in the right hand corner. You'll see a big red button that says sign in, but you will choose business banking and select business banking. It will take you and when you once you click on that page, that is the page that will um you can now go and do the whole setup or to log into the online banking. So that is how you will actually access the various websites for the various country and the business banking page for you to view Scotia online for business. All right. So um, I have another question here. Can you explain? Hold on a minute for me, please. Can you explain how to add a recipient again for third for transfers and for third party transfer from Scotia to Scotia transfer? Okay, sure. I'll be glad to assist. Now, you won't need to add a recipient for transfers, but for third-party transfers, once you've signed in, you'll go to account management. You're going to select third-party transfers, and then you're going to select manage third-party recipients. Now, once the page has loaded, you'll be given the option to select whether you want to create an individual third-party recipient or a business third party recipient. Once you've made your option, you're going to select set recipient type. Once you've done that, you'll be brought to the page to enter the information. Now for Scotia Bank recipient, it's important that you receive the correct account details, including their name, account number and branch. Because you would be required to enter the branch transit along with the correct credentials for the account holder. Additionally, you would have to select the corresponding branch from the bank listing below. And once you've entered all of that information, you will just submit and confirm and the recipient will be added. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Rashid. Um, so another question here is someone from Turks and Caicos, and they've said that they have online banking already set up. However, they are not, they are not seeing the option to do third party transfer. And they're just trying to remember where do you go to see that option set up for um, to set up a pay. Okay, so again, if that's, if that's okay. Okay, all right, so for that right option, here. you'll go to account management. Now, if you're not seeing the account management tab, or if you see the account management tab but below, you're not seeing the sub tab that says third party transfers. It means that you're not enabled for that service. And after the presentation, Kesa will share the emails for you to forward your request to so that if it is that you want to be enrolled for that service, we can proceed um, in doing that. We will just liaise with you, walk you through the process, show you the benefits of the services, pricing, everything, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Thank you, Rashid. Another question is, can you send a confirmation email directly to the third party that you transfer funds to? 
And how do you print a confirmation report that you can send to the person slash business that you have transferred the funds to? So who will take that question? All right. So in regards to the email confirmation, right now, no, we're not able to send a confirmation to our recipient when a payment has been completed. However, once you have completed the payment, you can always go to the third party transfer history, click on that specific payment, and you can either take a screenshot or save the page or print the page electronically and email that screen to your payee. Okay, thank you very much, um, Rashid. Um, another question is, um, I think you answered that question already. Why, why would I use third party transfer as opposed to disbursements? Who will take that question? Um, I can take it here. Uh, okay. I, I, um, here in, sorry, I'm Michael Belfort here in Cayman. Um, yes. For the third for the third party transfers, before we had a local ACH here in Cayman, we used a third party uh, feature that was to send money to other banks. Now right. that was a little more costly than what uh, disbursement is now. Now that we have a local ACH, uh, we prefer to use the disbursement mm -hmm. or the payroll feature to send uh, to send to other parties. It is a little cheaper, but the third party was still there from um, it's a legacy. Um, a legacy product that's still, uh, sorry, a legacy segment that's still there. So you can use the third party, just bear in mind it's a little more costly, but the disbursement does the same thing. That's if the country has an ACH. If a country doesn't have a local ACH, then the third party is still used to send to other banks. Okay. Thank you, so Michael. Just, just to Rich add to that. You want to add um, okay, Richmond? Yes. So like Michael would have advised in a lot of sites, the third party transfers may be a, may be a bit more costly. Um, while other sites, there are, they are, I guess there's an, an initiative now to reprice, whereas third parties in, I guess within Scotiabank will now be free of cost. And I guess it may be easier from a third, from using third party transfers because in the past, there was the requirement to have a package when you introduce disbursement and or direct deposit. So there was a need for a package with a monthly reoccurring cost, as opposed to third parties, which, which there would, would not be a requirement for that package. You could just do one-off payments. So there are pros and cons for each product. And it's important, again, to have that conversation with your business banking manager and or your GTB officer to really have an understanding as to what your needs are. Okay. Thank you, Richmond. Anybody else would like to add anything else or that's it? All right. Thank you. We're going to move to the next question. Next question is, please clarify the statement that RG, no, RTGS transfers are over 1 million. I believe ACH should not exceed one million. This is, I think, this is referring to Jamaica, but RTGS can be for any amount greater than I see zero dollar. Rashid. Yeah. So basically, in Jamaica, for our transaction, well, on our platform, that is, for a transaction to be classified as an RTGS payment, it has to be, well, the value has to be a million dollars or more going across banks. Anything below that threshold would be classified as an ACH payment. Now, I've heard um, stories about other banks giving you the option to select whether you want to process a transaction, whether via ACH or RTG on their platform, regardless of value. But on our platform, what will in, what would classify a payment as an RTG or an ACH is the value amount. And for RTGS, it is a million dollars or more. Okay. Thank you, Rashid. Another question is, what's the procedure when more than one signature is required on an account? Is that referring to the BASA or is that referring to... Sorry. 
is that referring to the actual payments where they want to replicate on the system where once a payment or a check is drawn, it requires two signatures? Right. Well, it, right, didn't no. it didn't clarify, but um, we can provide the scenarios because they are, for when you're going to set up initially, you have to indicate how many persons that you would like to be signatory on the account. So mm -hmm. when you have to do different transactions, then you'll determine how many persons have to sign off on the transaction. So you can Correct. go ahead, Rashid. Yes, so that's what I was about to um, explain. Now, for each transaction on the system, whether internally or external transactions, mm -hmm. you are given the option to select approvals for that specific transaction. Now, if your current business model requires that for any check that is drawn or any payment being made from the account requires two persons to sign, we can replicate it on the system. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm going to try to quickly run through questions. We like the fact that our, our audience is very engaged. I like it. The other question is here. Um, what is the process of sending money from Scotia Antigua to Jamaica? That uh, we we'll probably have to take that off air and respond no, to that part. Or can you answer that? Is that is actually question? a wire payment, basically. Right. Which which we want to we want to actually this workshop today, this seminar today is um, about specific um, topics. As we mentioned, accounting for uh, uh, information reporting, which includes third party transfer. The next seminar, which we'll have on next week, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Um, Eastern time, we will be focusing on wire payments. And so that's where you'll be able to fully understand how that works and um, ask any relevant questions. So what we will do is hopefully that you'll be able to join us next week to get more insight on that particular trans type of transaction and how it's done. Um, another question is, when I started using online banking, I was able to make third party transfer and now I'm not. What could have gone wrong? I have had to visit the bank to get their transfer done in the branch. Well, that could be for a number of reasons. I think that is something that we might have to speak well speak to you on. We would have to look on your profile and see what is on it right now before we're able to give a solution to what happened. Okay. To that okay, so, so what I'm going to recommend for this particular customer, when we actually at the end show you the email address for the various countries, you can send an email to the, if you're from Jamaica, the Jamaica inbox and whichever country, and then we will get in contact with you. What is important for most of your emails, you need to indicate for us the name of your business, the, the branch and a contact number to reach you so that we can have the right business banker call you depending on the branch that you're assigned to. Okay. Um, another question. So, so Rashid, I think I tried to explain what GTB is, but what is the acronym means? GTB itself. What does it stand for? All right. Global so transaction banking. <laughs> Thank Global you. Transaction <laughs> banking. Thank so, you. so just to clarify, GTB would, would comprise of both online banking Mm -hmm. as well as merchant services. Right. Thank right. You. So, uh, right. Right. All right. Another, so um, time is coming upon us, but we want to make sure that we answer so the questions of our customers. So let me quickly see um, another question here. I have, a, um, I really wanted to know how to receive something in writing with the instructions. Okay. So the customer is asking about instructions as it relates to third party. So what I want to explain after this, we actually do have um, some documents with the screenshots and the guidelines for each transaction, third party information reporting, wire transfer, cross currency. We have those and batch payments, et cetera, which we will share with you. Oh, your business banker all has access to these um, steps and he or she will be able to send you once you reach out to your business banker. They will, send, they will send you the step guide. What I want to say also at the end of this webinar, we will be taking, um, doing a nice video so you'll be able to can get the steps, um, how it was explained today as to how to do the various um, transactions. And we'll be doing that for all, for the entire series. As part of our thing is to ensure that we provide you, equip you with the, um, the information to assist you to make sure that your online banking process is seamless. The other question is now, how do you get the reference number? Well, 
once an account is once a, an account is um, once a user is created, the system would automatically generate a reference number and forward it to the address that was provided. So if the customer at that time, um, I guess they forgot to use their reference number because I believe the reference number is a good for maybe 30 days, Rashid, you could confirm. If not, they can reach out to customer support and a new reference number can be generated. Sometimes if, if the user is just a normal user and not an administrator, they can, um, the CSA or the company system administrator can also reset the user so they can recover credentials and they would then at that time get a new reference number again. So anytime there's any change to the profile, the system would automatically send a reference number to the email that was being provided. Okay. All right, so we're almost um, towards the end. I'm going to be probably asking you three more questions and then we will um, look and take the questions off here and ask and try to answer them. Um, I'm seeing as a number time. of questions from yes. Marvel. So, right, so, so, yes. so Rashid, um, one question which we wanted to quickly answer before we go was the questions that we, do we, do we account holders need to have dialogue with our bank before we go online and set up our account? If so, yes, how? So, um, someone would like to take that question? So, um, you as a, as an account holder, you cannot just go onto the website and, and create your access and your profile as you would be accustomed to for the personal banking. You know, personal banking, you would just need your Scotia card, you can just log onto the site and register. You can't do that as it, as it relates to business online banking. Again, the security, the security level is a bit more detailed because generally the account activity is a bit more. Um, one thing we, what Rashid would have mentioned earlier is that there's a dual authentication where you would need both your password as well as the use of a token, whether digital and or physical. So we need to understand from a business end, you would need to go and register. And again, as we mentioned earlier, in some cases, there may be a need for multiple signatories, whether it's be two signatories or some, some customers have tiered, whether an A and B customer. So all of that has to be considered when we are giving access to the online banking because we want to make sure that the same controls that are in place in the branch would be duplicated online for the online banking. Okay, thank you, Richmond. Two more questions before we go and before we actually close this webinar. The question is, I forgot my password. I'm now locked out. How can I reset my password? All right, like so to that? that will definitely be the support team, your respective BSC. Right. Um, normally, I can't, and I think in the email that Kesa would be sending out, it will contain all the information and contact details for your respective right. BSC. And I figure that this similar, the other question is about how do I activate my digital token if the same situation. So, so let me just probably um, help our customers here. So we do, um, for all the countries, we have a support unit um, that helps with, they take call, they make calls or they send you an email with the steps as to how to address certain questions. So for example, in this situation, we said if you want to activate a digital token, they will actually send you the instructional guide as to how to do so. If you're having challenges, then they will call you to walk you through the process. And likewise, if you actually like your re to reset your password. Um, I will provide you at the end of the uh, at the end, which is where we're at now, with the various email addresses that you can send um, your request or you can call their um, the business support unit, and someone should be able to assist you. So um, I'm going to ask my team to assist me both by putting up the right now the email addresses I know for Jamaica. For example, we have an inbox which is which is the BNSJ um, Business Banking at at scotiabank.com. Once you send an email to that inbox, we will read and redirect it to whomever um, the relevant person is to assist you with those particular needs. Um, if it is for Bahamas, we actually have two email addresses that you can send to. 
You can either send your email to the gtb.bahamas at scotiabank.com or you can send it to the bsbsc dot cms support at scotiabank.com that's for bahamas they'll assist you with any queries um for cayman you can actually call this number instead of sending an email you can call 345-945-0806 and choose option option three and that will take you to the person however the two business bankers um that you make you can reach out to their sherrett billings or their kevin dawkins in the case of TCI, you can send an email to smallbusinesstc at scotiabank.com. So if you send an email to any of those addresses or if you call any of the numbers that you're maybe seeing on the screen now, someone from the team will be able to assist you and they will direct you to the right persons to assist you with whatever queries that you have. What we will also do at the end of this seminar is to look at the questions again, what your customers would have asked us to ensure that in um, our frequently asked questions or to ensure that in our our guides that we have created that would have been able to, and to address all your questions or your queries. We do want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule for joining us today for the first in our Scotia Online for Business webinar. We will be having another webinar next week, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time which means in other countries, which may be an hour ahead of us, their time would be at 5 p.m. And we will be going through wire payment and explaining how that works and answer all your questions and queries. And then the final and the final week, is, which is the week after, um, we will also have another webinar, which will be talking about um, how to do batch payments, as well as disbursements, disbursements and I guess if there are any other errors that we may not, um, we may have missed out, we'll ensure that that is included in the final workshop. But that's the idea. What we're, our goal is to ensure that at the end of this webinar series, all our customers will be able to have a better understanding of how the Scotia Online for Business platform works, um, how you can use it to enhance your everyday banking needs, as well as how to ensure that you are able to sit in the comfort of your home not have to worry to come to a branch to join a line, keep yourself safe in this very um in this time and do banking comfortably at your workplace or in your home, or maybe if you're on the beach or if you're doing um if you're somewhere just relaxing, that's what we want to ensure that banking is at your fingertips. And so we just want to thank you for taking the time. Thank the members of, of the team, Rashid John, who was our presenter today. We had Richmond um McKinney, and we have Tedra Johnson, and we had William, we have Michael Belfour, who is from um, Cayman Islands, and Richmond and Tedra is from Bahamas, and Rashid is from Jamaica. They were, the, the members of our team were able to answer all your questions today. And again, if you would like for us to assist you, please remember the email addresses that we placed um, on the screens earlier, that you can contact us, and we'll be able to assist you whatever needs that you have. And again, thank you so much. Do have yourself a wonderful evening and please stay safe. Managing your company's finances remotely is now more important than ever. With Scotia Online for Business, you can safely and quickly conduct your transactions and save on costs. Accept payments, transfer funds, including third-party and wire transfers, view balances and download statements, pay bills and credit cards, make supplier payments, manage payroll, and purchase foreign exchange. Let us handle the way your business does business. Speak with a Scotia representative today. Call 888-429-5087 or email bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com.